Hey, Joe here from Home Studio Corner talking about the PreSonus Studio Live 24, specifically how to set it up to play different sources through different faders so you're not having to constantly be pushing buttons to get to what you want to hear. Let me show you what I'm talking about. On the first fader, we're going to hear this current mix that I'm working on. But then I realized there's a YouTube video I want to watch that has a tip that I forgot about so I can play the YouTube video back through another channel. The differences are, that's called critical listening. And then let's say I've got a reference track on my phone that I want to listen to and I've got that plugged in via an eighth inch jack. That shows up on this fader. Break us down. And I can quickly Five -step mix switch between all three. They're all going at the same time and I can have them all separate without having to push any buttons. Now I'm gonna show you exactly step by step how to set this up, it's super handy. First thing you wanna do is hit this inputs button over here, so we're just looking at the inputs on the board in linear order, and then come over to the next button and just scroll over until we're seeing the last bank of channels. And we're gonna look for the tape input. I talked about the tape input in a recent video. When you select the tape input, you have the option to choose where its source is gonna come from. So it can either come from the two that I use the most is USB, which is playing back from the computer, or analog. And the way I had this set up in the past, if I wanted to listen to something from YouTube on my studio computer, I'd switch to that. If I wanted to listen to my phone plugged in via eighth inch actual analog cable, I would switch to that. And I'd have to go back and forth and back and forth, which was a little bit annoying if I just wanted to plug it in and listen. And I remember, okay, why am I not hearing it? Oh, right. I've got to come over to tape input, hit select, come over here and select the other input. It's not a huge deal, but then I realized I've got a 24 channel board. Why not take advantage of all these other faders to have each thing playing back on its own system? So the first thing I did was set up the tape input to be analog only. And then I labeled it as laptop because I have a lap an eighth inch connection on my laptop that's what I want this to be dedicated to solely that analog input so I select the channel I come up here I tap on channel name and I type in laptop there we go and that shows up down here on the channel next thing we want to do is just find a free set of channels that we're not using preferably not something in channels 1 through 24 because we have all these extra channels towards the end in the 25 to 32 range find a pair of those and decide to use those as your playback from your computer so i decided to go with channels 29 and 30. first thing is just select one of them come up here and hit link right there and that will make them stereo panning them left and right and now the faders move together Metal. okay Next thing we want to do is we're going to name this something like computer. So I'm going to name this iMac because that's the type of computer I have. So I select them. I come up here on the screen, touch right there, and type it in. And voila, this one is now named iMac. It doesn't show up on both channels, but that's not a problem. I'll show you why in a second. Next thing you want to do is make sure the computer is set to output its main computer output, not the DAW output, but just the computer output, the regular USB output to channels 29 and 30. Let me show you how to do that. If you open up the Audio MIDI Setup app, come over here and choose your Studio Live 24. And then this may look familiar if you saw a previous video. Come down to Configure Speakers. And that's going to give us the option to choose which output our left speaker and our right speaker is routed to. So we're going to choose output 29 for our left speaker and output 30 for our right speaker. This usually defaults to something like 1 and 2, but 1 and 2 is where I've got my mix in Studio One routed. I want this computer output, things like YouTube, iTunes, things like that, to go to a different fader so I can have two faders for those. One of the main reasons for that is so I can have a reference track playing. Reference tracks are usually mastered. I'm going to want them to be quieter than my mix, and having them on two separate faders allows me to do that easily. Hit apply. Open up YouTube. Hit play. Oh, look, Warren Hewitt. Look at him. Isn't he so handsome? Turn up the fader on the board. Ten things that the pros do. 10 things that the pros do, and we're able to hear it on individual faders. Now, the final piece of the puzzle, it doesn't do a lot of good to have these, you know, here's my computer, here's my laptop, and then I have to scroll over here to get to Studio One's output. That's where the user bank comes in handy. I select that, and by holding down each of these select buttons, we can choose what channel we want to be there. So for the first one, we've got DAW1. For the next one, oh, let me select it. For the second one, we hold down the select button, we come over here and we just turn the knob here to scroll down until we can see channel 29, which we can see we already named iMac. Boom, that's the second fader. Now for the third fader, we hold down fader three, 
do the same thing. We just keep scrolling until we see our laptop input. Select that. So now you can see Fader 1 is the DAW, Studio 1. Fader 2 is my iMac, that's YouTube. And Fader 3 is the laptop, which is playing back some music. And I can easily switch between them. I see what you... And they're all right there waiting for me. Now, the reason I only have one fader is since these two are linked, I don't have to have fader one and two here and then three and four because it's redundant. I can move this one fader and it's going to move the secondary linked fader kind of behind the scenes. I don't need them both there. This allows me to save real estate on my mixer and just have three faders for the three things I listen to most. And this fourth fader, just in case you're wondering, that's my voice. That's the microphone you're hearing now. If I turn it down, you're not going to be able to hear me as well. Pretty cool, huh? So you may be thinking, so what, Joe? This is a mixer. Of course, you can route things to different channels. But the cool thing is you can route the output, the USB output of your computer isn't dedicated to just the tape input on the board. You can actually send it anywhere, which adds a lot of flexibility. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one.